Welcome to Story Lab. This week we're talking about courage while we take a look at the story of some spies who had a split decision on their mission report. Oh, and look out for this. I'm Amaya. And I'm Zeke. And we're talking about courage, which is being brave enough to do what you should, even when you're afraid. So, let me get this straight. Fear is where courage starts? Yep. I could be a courage champion. What are you afraid of? Okay, super weird, but there's this bed post in my aunt's guest room I'm kind of scared of walking past. Um... Okay, I mean, people are afraid of all kinds of things. I looked up some of the top fears. Like what? Number five, fear of getting laughed at. Ooh. <laughs> Number four, fear of thunder and lightning. Number three, fear of big dogs. <laughs> Number two, fear of heights. And number one, fear of snakes and spiders. Now my heart's pounding. I know, right? When fear shows up, it can actually take over your body. Fear really does go straight for the control system. Mm-hmm. When you face a fear, your brain alerts your nervous system, which triggers the release of stress hormones like cortisol and adrenaline. This causes your blood pressure, heart rate, and breathing to increase. More blood flows to your limbs so you can throw a punch or run for your life. And some parts of your brain are so busy amping up your body that the thinking part of your brain can shut down. Wow. No wonder we make such terrible decisions when we're afraid. Yep, but there are things that we can do to face our fear. Like we can breathe. Deeply and slowly. And we can also ask questions about our fears. Like, what do I really think that bedpost is gonna do to me? <laughs> exactly. Oh, uh, great job holding up the bed. You can even plan baby steps to face your fear, a little bit at a time. Hey, what are you afraid of? Um, crickets. What? Yeah. <laughs> What's in the box? Um, <laughs> a cricket. Oh, oh, this is great. You can face your fear right here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, just gonna. Lift the box up really slowly. And then I'm just going to open it really slowly. Ah! Maybe after the story. <laughs> well, OK. It's time for the story before the story. Today, we're in the fourth book of the Old Testament, Numbers. God promised to bless the whole world through Abraham's family, the Israelites, and give them a home in the land of Canaan. God delivered them from slavery in Egypt, leading them through the Red Sea. In the desert, God showed deep love by giving the Israelites food and water. God also gave them rules to show them how to love God and love others. At last, God led the people to the very edge of Canaan, the Promised Land. And that's where our story starts. Let's go. Hey, everyone. Hi, Hi Brian. Brian. OK, so about two years after crossing the Red Sea, the Israelites had finally made it to the very edge of Canaan, the land that God promised to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God told their leader, Moses, send some men to check out the land of Canaan. I am giving it to the Israelites. Send one leader from each of Israel's tribes. So Moses called a leader from each of the 12 tribes. Shemua, Shaphat, Caleb, Igal, Joshua, Palti, Gadiel, Gadi, Amiel, Sether, Nabi, and Jewel. So once the gang was all together, Moses laid out a super secret spy mission for these guys. I want you to see what Canaan is like. 
Are there a lot of people or just a few? Are they strong or weak? Do their towns have high walls? Oh, and study the land. Is the soil rich or poor? Are there trees? Now bring back some of the food that grows there if you can. So just like that, these 12 men snuck into Canaan just as God had instructed. Now, for about six weeks, they traveled the length of the country and saw the places where Abraham and his family had lived hundreds of years before. On their return journey, the spies cut a bunch of grapes so ginormous, it had to be carried on a pole between two men. You can bet that when they showed up in the Israelite camp at the end of 40 days, <laughs> it made a pretty big stir. At first, the spies gave a glowing report. Canaan is super awesome. The land is filled with so many good things. It's practically flowing with milk and honey. Yeah, check out these grapes. <laughs> but we can never go there. The people who live there are powerful. Their cities have high walls. The people are like giants. Even though the spies had seen many good things, they were stuck on their fears. Only Joshua and Caleb were brave enough to speak up. We should go up and take the land. We can certainly do it. No way. They're, they're, they're stronger than we are. They're so ginormous that we look like crickets to them. The Israelites chose to listen to fear. They went into complete panic mode, convinced they would be destroyed. They even begged to go back to Egypt. Joshua and Caleb tried to speak to them. The land is very good. If the Lord is pleased with us, he'll lead us there. He will give it to us, but we've got to obey him. Yeah, don't be afraid of the people in the land. The Lord is with us. Instead of listening to Joshua and Caleb, the Israelites talked about killing them. But in the midst of all this chaos, the glory of God appeared at the tent of meeting. God spoke to Moses. How long will they refuse to believe in me? Moses begged God to have mercy on the Israelites. Lord, your love is great. Forgive the sin of these people, just as you've done so many times already. I have forgiven them, just as you asked. But not one of these people will see the land I promised to give them. But my servant Caleb, has a different spirit. He follows me with his whole heart, so I will bring him into the land. Joshua was also allowed to enter the land. God did forgive the Israelites for turning away again, but there were big consequences. Instead of forging ahead into Canaan, the Israelites ended up wandering and stuck in the wilderness for almost 40 years. Now, by that time, only Joshua and Caleb were still living to lead the new generation, their children, into Canaan. And fast forward, they did. At the end of 40 years, Joshua led the Israelites into the promised land. And right away, they came up to the walled city of Jericho. But with God's help, they faced their fears, and those impossibly strong walls came tumbling down. But <laughs> that's another story for another day. Wow. I mean, so the spies' fears were real. I mean, their enemies were really strong. Yep, but Joshua and Caleb knew that God had already promised to help them. Yeah, they had to make a choice to do the right thing, even when everyone else was giving in to fear. So, what's our part in the story? Well, fear is totally normal, but God can still help you be brave and do the right thing. Yeah. Maybe you're in a group where a popular girl is saying mean things about another kid. Your friends might be afraid to speak up because they don't want to get laughed at. But you can be brave and you can speak up because that's not right. Or maybe the fire alarm goes off and one of your friends is really panicked. That happened in my school. Yeah, you can be the one to stop and help them calm down. Right. You never have to face fear alone. When you believe in Jesus and follow him, God's Spirit lives in you and can give you the courage to do the right thing. Even if you are afraid. And that's something awesome to hold on to. Oh, for sure. See you next time. So here's the thing. You can do what you should even when others are afraid. Want to face that fear right now? Um, sure. I mean, <laughs> what's one giant evil... 
cricket going to do to me? <laughs> Baby steps. Okay. Just going to pick it up real slowly. Okay, remember your breathing. Release the cricket. <laughs> Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time.